I think the street is, is wondering whether we're going to see a 5G phone. We don't think we're going to see a 5G phone. Uh, you have to look into the phone to figure out what Apple's really up to. And a lot's been made about the possibility of three cameras on the back of the phone. And that would be the most exciting news because it would be not to take better selfies, not to take just better pictures, but a window into their future plans of VR and AR, which I think are going to be a, a big deal in a 5G world. And we're not in that 5G world yet, so they don't need a 5G phone. But we want to get a look at what we're going to be talking about six months, eight months, and maybe 12 months down I the mean, road. Yeah, Tim, there's two sides to the story. Number one, the technology is cool, right? We all like to see shiny new things and what they can do. But for our investors that are watching right now, they care if these things they announce are going to actually move the stock. Will an iPhone <laughs> 11, will a new Mac, will three cameras, will a new watch, will it move Apple shares? Well, Apple shares aren't patently expensive. So I think that as long as Apple stays a leader in technology and shows people what they're going to be able to do additionally with all these devices, uh, that it can move the stock. It is not certainly a super cycle for iPhone at this point. A lot of people will wait until you have a 5G phone because the promise of 5G is all over the media and you already have some competitors putting out 5G phones. People are unlikely to move to competitors' phones simply for that reason because they are in the Roach Motel of iOS. Um, so what we really want to see is what is iOS going to bring down the road and how might they tie that into the other services and devices that they're going to bring forward today. Well, some would say the Roach Motel is a five-star Roach Motel here. Uh, on a, separ on a separate there. note, Tim, I want to get your comments on this because yesterday on the Halftime Report, Scott and the gang are out in San Francisco. We had a great guest lineup yesterday, one of whom was Jason Calacanis, sort of a tech pundit and investor. And he made some pretty bold sort of statements about what should happen to Apple CEO Tim Cook. Listen to this, and then I want to get your response. You got to fire Tim Cook. It's a disaster. I mean, I think the, they haven't done anything innovative since this device, which is magical. The iPods are amazing. See, I thought amazing. you were joking. You're being No, you're I'm being serious? dead serious. I think it's time for him to uh, pass the baton. They are resting on the laurels of Steve Jobs' legacy. They need to put Tim Cook, in, Tim Cook in another position, get Elon Musk in there, let him run the company. Find somebody like that. Wow, strong words. I mean, the stock's up 30%. Tim Cook has added more market cap to Apple, Tim, than Steve Jobs did. I mean, if you just look at sort of the, the, their own tenures, I mean, was that just sort of the hot take trying to make headlines or TV, or do you think Jason has any kind of a point? Wow, I, I don't think he has any point at all. And I think perhaps saying things like Tim Cook should be fired is what makes you a pundit in some way, shape, or form. It gets you press. But Tim Cook is a fantastic operator. He's got wonderful teams of people that are pushing the ball forward into the next technology. The watch is the best-selling smartwatch. They're a leader in wearables. They have the AirPods, the acquisition of Beats. Nobody pays any attention to, but they have a lead in wearables with Beats. So it's really hard to say that Tim Cook hasn't been a great operator and that Apple has not continued to have the best product in each of the categories. So I, I do find it somewhat laughable. Yeah, I, I know that Jason also wants him to do a deal, buy somebody big to maybe get the stock moving. All right, right. Tim, I want to shift gears. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. I want to get your take on a different story. 50 U.S. attorneys general yesterday finally unveiling their official investigation into Google Alphabet. Elizabeth Schultz joining us now live with more on this big story from London. Elizabeth. Hey, Brian, yes, this latest investigation coming from 50 state attorneys general, it's an antitrust investigation into Google. The AGs are from 48 states, plus the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. California and Alabama are the two states not involved in the probe. Now, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who is leading the investigation, saying in a press conference the states are initially focusing on Google's dominance in online advertising. It is an investigation to determine the facts. And right now we're looking at, at advertising, but the facts will lead to where the facts lead. We also care about businesses, especially small businesses, uh, that may be locked out as a result of uh, what may be monopolistic uh, power. So the attorneys general saying the question is whether Google has used its dominance to undermine consumer choice, stifle innovation, and violate privacy. A separate group of state AGs announced Friday they're looking into a similar concerns with Facebook. Now, these state investigations add momentum to the scrutiny already piling up on tech giants. Google saying it will continue to work constructively with regulators. 
company has confirmed it's cooperating with a broader Justice Department review of big tech. That's on top of a House Judiciary Committee antitrust investigation, plus ongoing probes around the world, including here in Europe. Now, so far, Brian, little impact on Google parent company Alphabet's share price, though. Stock closing pretty much flat yesterday and still up about 15 percent so far this year. Yeah, Elizabeth, big story there. Elizabeth Schultz, thank you very much. All right, Tim Lesko is still with us. Tim, your take, and why do you think that investors seem to be pretty much all but ignoring these seemingly big headlines? Well, I, I think investors paid attention when it was the federal government and the antitrust uh, stuff started earlier this year, really across big tech. Um, the state attorneys general have a point about their dominance in search and their dominance in advertising. Whether or not they can turn that and prove either consumer harm or business harm is a pretty high bar. Uh, states' attorneys general seem to be going after money, where the federal government seems to be going after antitrust. Um, this is going to take a long time to work itself out. And I think the continued secular move towards online advertising is maybe in the middle innings. So if you're a business and you're looking to advertise, you have three or four choices in where you're going to advertise. And Google slash Alphabet's going to be one of them. So I don't think in the short run investors see that anything is going to change in that massive move towards the online mm -hmm. distribution of media and the advertising that's going to support it. 